Hello, and welcome to this presentation. My name is Dennis Hollengasser, a volunteer with AARP Massachusetts Speakers Bureau. Thank you for joining us for this presentation. This is one of it in a four part series with uh, the City of Boston Age Strong Project. Uh, today's presentation is on protecting your children and grandchildren from scams and identity theft. The other um, presentations in this series is protecting your children and grandchildren from student loan scams, protecting your children and grandchildren from job search scams, and the grandparent scams. Today, we're going to talk about a number of things uh, on protecting grandchildren from scams and identity theft. Uh, one, how to avoid being victimized. Uh, the role that grandparents can play in the process. Uh, what is identity theft and identity fraud? Uh, how do how the scams work? Four tips to protect your grandchildren and some resources available through AARP. Ch uh, younger people are more likely to be scammed. They just have less money to steal. Older folks, on the other hand, are scammed um, and they do have, generally speaking, more money and less chance to recover from, from a scam. Criminals have one goal in mind, to gain your confidence in order to get your money or to get your personal information, which usually leads to getting your money. A couple questions as we uh, think about as we begin the presentation here. Um, if you have grandchildren, um, if you have grandchildren who are on social media, things like Facebook, TikTok, and Instagram, they have their own bank accounts. Um, they have their own, if, um, if you think they've been approached with a scam or a fraud, information in this presentation will be helpful to you. One piece of information is, is important. Awareness, information, and education is our first line of defense to protecting all of ourselves from scams and frauds. Because if you know about a, a scam, a specific scam, you are 80% less likely to engage with the scammer. And if you do engage, you're 40% less likely to be victimized. So it's our first line of defense, awareness, information, and education. Grandparents play a special role in the lives of their grandchildren. When asked who they trust most, some of these teens and 20-somethings say that parents and their grandparents are the ones that they would go to if they had a problem. So we need to take the bait. We need to guide them through a very treacherous landscape of modern fraud. And modern fraud is, a lot of it is digital fraud, something that growing up I never experienced. And of course, as we all experiencing it now, but because so much of their life is spent online, uh, younger folks uh, are more susceptible to running into fraud on, on a digital basis or environment. And we have to bring up the topic with them. And if we don't, then we're part of the problem. When AAR, AARP put the Fraud Watch Network together, they went out to prisons and, and they talked to people who were in prison for perpetrating scams and being convicted. And they asked them, why are you so successful at taking people's money? And they all said the same thing. You've got to keep them under the ether. You have to keep the victim in a heightened emotional state. Um, things like fear. You're going to go to jail if you don't respond to this either a summons for court or, um, or we're gonna shut off your electricity because you're overdue. Um, excitement, congratulations, you've won money of some sort. The, the key here is if you've won money before they send it to you, they always want you to send something to them first, a processing fee or taxes or something. Fear is, fear is right up there, we've kidnapped your grandchild. You need to send money. Another one, again, fear is that your computer is in a meltdown. That got me into trouble once. Um, and that you need to do something. So when you're, you get the, the whinings, alarms on, in a, on your laptop or, or PC or device saying that you've been infected, that you need to call this number and don't shut it down, what you should do, 
is you should shut it down. And then reboot and you should be all set. Identity theft and identity fraud are two things. Identity theft is when someone steals your information. That happens in this country about every two seconds. Chances are pretty good that your identity has been stolen. So it's when someone steals your personal information. Um, it could be simply as your name and address, your social security number, which is the link to just about everything um, in your profile, uh, your credit card or bank information, or uh, medical insurance information. Phishing is a technique that they use to collect data, and it can be done in a number of ways. One of the things that we've all seen is unsolicited emails of one sort or another coming across um, um, saying that there is a problem with either your bank account, with your Netflix account, with Amazon, with the delivery from UPS, um, and they're phishing. They throw a large net of tons of emails hoping to get one tenth of one percent of people to respond it could be as simple as um filling out a warranty card or entering a contest just like professional just like professional fundraisers uh that buy and sell uh contact lists um so do scammers they use it for nefarious purposes but they buy and sell these contact lists also uh, there's harvesting of information on a garbage can, uh, what we call dumpster divers, uh, untorn bills and other information that people throw away without thinking. I shred everything. Uh, sharing personal information online. And younger people live a lot of their life online. They post their entire, their entire life in Facebook, TikTok, or Instagram. Um, all that, once that information is out there, there's no getting it back. It's out there. Some captures it and then they have it. Uh, other places that they they um, they search are obituary notices. Think of an obituary with someone's the deceased's name, date of birth, date of death, spouse, spouse's maiden name if appropriate, um, all their children's names, sometimes their grandchildren, where they live. Uh, how do they know about all my grandchildren? Well, in think about in, in uh, time of uh, losing a loved one. Our emotions are raw. And we're not thinking logically oftentimes about some of these things. And data breaches. Uh, for those of you grandparents who are on um, Medicare, there was just a data breach uh, announced uh, actually in the AARP Fraud Watch alert, and we'll talk about that in a minute, about the data breach with Medicare. So there are things we can do. Um, Think about when your grandchild was born. Before they leave the hospital, paperwork is done to give them a social security number. They don't have, they won't use that social security number probably for four, at least 14 years until they perhaps start a job. Um, so that is sitting there for say 14 years. We can protect that. You can protect yourself and them. There are, you should be, you should on a regular basis, check your credit report and theirs on Equifax, TransUnion and Experian. And at the end of the presentation, we will have a link to um, uh, some sort of slides that will be posted along with this with uh, this video up on the, on the website that you're gonna get this video on. Um, and you can click on those links and it'll bring you to uh, all these sites. A Couple of things you should consider, one for yourself and for your kids, um, Doing a credit alert. A credit alert. You go to one of these. Um, you go to one of these uh, credit bureaus, and you fill it out. And it can be a little scary because one of the things that they have to know is your social security number. So, when you go, make sure that you're going to their website, Equifax, TransUnion, and Experian, and not some bogus one. And a credit alert simply says, if anyone searches your credit for any reason, you're going to be alerted, usually by however you want to be, either by text or by um, email. And it's a great way to, to keep in the forefront of your mind that that's, this whole credit, credit thing is, um, is already out there. 
So a credit alert simply warns you that somebody is looking into it. A credit freeze says you must do with each of these three credit bureaus. And you have to go in and you have to complete freezing your credit. I don't expect to take out a loan, so I froze my credit. You might want to consider freezing your credit for the for your for the um, the teenage the young people in your life, um, grand grandkids. They're again, they're not going to use that have to use credit for 14 years and probably even check on it. Uh, so it's it's important uh, to think about either freezing um, freezing your credit or uh, which means you can't, it doesn't affect using your credit card. People ask that all the time. Well, what about my credit card? It doesn't, you can't open a new credit card. You can't open a loan, but you can, you know, can keep on using your, your reg regular uh, credit card. And at the end, there will be some slides that'll talk about specifically where you can get information on how to do these. There are an, some specific ways that scammers target young people because they're they're and they target them they target them based on their their age the most troubling of all of these is something called sextortion in which criminals solicit explicit photos from young people and then blackmail them and the fbi says this is on the rise Amy Knopfinger, who is the AARP Director of Fraud Victim Support, says that extortion can happen anywhere. It can start on a gaming app. It can start on a website. It can start on a social media platform. She wants parents and older adults to say to the young people in their lives, if you ever hear of anyone struggling with this, they need to talk to somebody. Younger people fall victim more often because, again, their life is lived online. Um, that happens with emails, all the apps that they're on, um, and more like, likely to be on the receiving end of peer pressure to be online. And the peer pressure isn't just to be online, but also to post things, to create videos and to post things. Sextortion accounts for a large share of email extortion complaints, and it is a very scary environment for young people to, to uh, be in. Online sex, uh, extortionists might also claim to have caught you in a, again, adults in a different sexually compromising situation. And they're dealing with fear and the heightened emotional, um, emo the heightened you're heightened emotion, so you're not thinking logically. Always take a breath, step back, and evaluate the situation. Younger people are also sometimes encouraged to be influencers, and an influencer is someone who has the power to affect the purchasing decisions uh, of others. If you've ever been on, say, something like YouTube or even Facebook, where they want you to be your friend, um, or do want you to subscribe to a certain channel. The more people that subscribe, the more advertisements uh, can be sold. And the more involved the kids become in becoming influencers. Uh, uh, young people are increasingly targeted with pitches customized to their generation, something I never experienced, something probably you've never experienced. Criminals offer to help young people to become these online influencers. So what are some tips, some tips that you can um, think about here? The first one is talk. Start conversations about fraud. Let them know that you're ready to listen. Ask them if they have ever heard, ask, ask them, have you heard about some frauds going on? Talk about a fraud that you've you've heard recently. Ask them what they're hearing from their friends. Um, again, we are the adult in the situation. If we don't bring up the topic, then, then we're sort of part of the problem. Um, again, mention a scam that you've heard on the news and ask them who would they talk to if they were involved in, in some kind of a scam here. 
The second is probably the hardest of all. Don't judge. Tell them that they can come to you no matter what, what's happening and that you'll be open and non-judgmental and not angry. Hard thing to do. And if and when they do come to you with a problem, lead with something like, you know, thanks for bringing this to me. We can figure this out together. And again, save your, your shock and anger for a pro private moment and not in front of them. Um, and again, think before you act. Third, share social media and online stay, say, stay safe tips. Suggest that they not give out their birth date, home address, or other seemingly innocuous information on social media. One of the places that they do this is on um, Facebook. Put your, name, your birthday out and it comes your birthday. You get all your friends to wish you a happy birthday. It's kind of warm and fuzzy. But once that information is out there, it's out there. Scammers might use credit, uh, apply some of this information out there to apply for a credit card. And remind them to think before they click. Younger people are online a lot earlier um, in their you know, six and seven. And sometimes they just don't think about clicking on things. Think about clicking on a link before in an email, a tweet, a, a text message, social media. Because when you click, you're gonna. It'll take you to another website. Sometimes these can be um, dangerous websites that may download uh, malware or lead you to sites that you shouldn't be on. And fourth, share social media and online state. Whoops, these are, these are more. Um, explain that the scammers are frequently uh, setting up online stores that look like the real. Uh, legitimate retailers. This goes for younger people as well as us. If you're shopping online and you see a real bargain coming through somewhere, either on social media or through a pop-up, look at it carefully. Look at the website it's coming from, making sure it is the actual website. Uh, we've seen things from, say, Target. And if you look carefully at the URL, it's coming from Target, T-A-R-G-E-T-T, -T, or they reverse two of the letters, something that we just probably wouldn't notice but it's there and it's a illegitimate website. If they, if you or your um, grandkids come across an unfamiliar website selling things, go to Google and type in the name of the website with the word fraud or scam. And it might be shocking what you, what's gonna come up. If, there, if this, is, this website has been involved in a scam, it will probably provide you some information. And fourth, show interest in their digital devices. Ask them to see that the new, the, their new apps that they're excited about. Um, ask them about privacy and security settings. Uh, they should be choosing multi-factor uh, authentication sites. Uh, so oftentimes uh, you log on, put user ID and password, and it, it'll send you a, um, a code, usually by, uh, by text, uh, that you have to put in as a second verification to get into the site. They should make their friends list private um, and not so only those friends can see what they're posting and not everybody in the world. They should turn off location sharing and, um, and also be sure not to geotag photos. And we'll talk about geotags here in the next slide. Geotags are embedded locations into photos um, that you post online, and it puts your exact location for the world to see. So if you're out somewhere and take a picture and immediately you post it online and you don't have geotags turned off, uh, anyone can go in, look at that photo and find exactly where you are. And it can be dangerous if there's stalkers out there, if you don't want somebody to know your location, um, so everyone can see where you are, sometimes with ill intentions. Um, safety has to be part of the conversation, conversation. And if children or grandchildren don't know how to change their privacy settings, they should come to you. And if you don't, you know somebody who does. You can also sometimes Google online, making sure that you're going to a reputable website to find that information. Or onto, um, sometimes YouTube will have videos on how to... Um, check your and check your uh, 
privacy settings. Some of the urgencies, urgency, uh, re the red flags that um, that you should be aware of and pass this information right on to your uh, grandkids and, and kids. Urgency, anyone that wants you to do something now, it can't wait, it can wait. That they want to get you under the ether, heightened emotional state, you must do it now. They also don't want you to tell anybody, do this right now and don't tell anybody. This is the great one with the grandparent scheme. When you get a call from a grandchild saying that they're in some kind of distress and they need to have money sent. Uh, don't tell my parents because they don't know I'm out of the country or they don't know I'm in this situation. Um, just don't tell them. And like I just said, send money. And they always want you to send money either by wire, by prepaid debit card, iTunes cards, Google Pay, crypto uh, currency, uh, or one of the cash apps like Zelle, Venmo, or Cash App. They're all like the same as um, um, cash, pretty much non-traceable. Once it's gone, it's gone. We've also heard people ask, have been asked to fax a copy of their check uh, so that the payment can be made because now you, the, the scammer has your name, your address, your bank account number, and your routing number. One of the resources AARP has that's updated on a regular basis is something called the Fraud Watch Network. And part of that is something called the Fraud Watch Network Helpline at 877. 9083360 and it is a it is a number that you can call it's free to everyone you do not have to be an AARP member you don't have to be 50 or older and you can use it to report a scam or to get to figure out whether something is a scam call the number and they will and it's important if you have been scammed to call them and report it are the are you going to get your money back Chances are probably not, but the emotional trauma that you're going to go through is going to is can be significant. And they're also going to help you on what you should do next to keep yourself safe. Um, it is available uh, every day from eight um, Monday through Friday from eight until eight. Um, give them a call and report the scam because they keep track of all the scams that are that are out there. And then they can set up. Um, uh information that they can post on the website. You can also on that on the Fraud Watch Network um, site, you can sign up for something called Fraud Watch Alerts. These come out every other week. Uh, they talk about how a scam works, what you should do, and what you should know. And they you can get them either via text or via email. And it's a great way of keeping in the forefront of your mind that fraud is always out there. Here is the homepage for the Fraud Watch Network. And here's on the right side, right about here is where you can you can sign up for a Fraud Watch alert. Um, and this this website is has constantly updated articles on some of the current frauds that are out there. And it's there, it's updated frequently. You can also listen to over a hundred different podcasts on they talk to folks who have been victimized. We talk to law enforcement and experts in the field. And here's the here's a resource, uh, some resources um, that will be posted uh, with this slideshow uh, on the website. Uh, you can find out how to freeze your credit. Um, you can um, report um, a fraud or a scam to um, uh, identitytheft.gov. Um, you can get your annual credit report here, the link the Fraud Watch Network, and something here called the AARP Fraud Support. Uh, it's a virtual Monday, I think they do it Monday through Thursday, several times a day. It's a virtual support group for people who have been victimized. And it helps helps, nav helps you navigate through the, the emotional trauma that you're going through. I've said in on a couple of them, and it is heartbreaking to hear some of the stories of people who have been victimized. Um, and they help you manage the emotional trauma that you're going through. So if you have been victimized or know someone, 
uh, you can click on this website and click on register and there you can choose one of the sessions uh, to go to and it's done all virtually. So that is information relative to the um, identity theft and protecting you and your, your, your uh, loved ones, grandchildren in particular, from becoming victimized from uh, fraud and scams. So stay safe and thank you for viewing.